me at all. And I was ne just next door, listen to another presentation. That's exciting. your comments and your support uh, and your criticism in fact would be very useful and uh, as I'm going through this if you have questions uh, just raise them okay uh, don't wait until the very end All right. okay so um, again my name is David I'm in the information technology section Bob Fox is my supervisor I'm a first-year PhD student and uh, the working title of, uh, my proposal is a study of information technology coordinators in schools, unique people for unique role, uh, or minor geniuses at work, etc. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'll uh, enumerate the problem and the uh, question. I'll discuss some of the literature that I've been reviewing about this topic. Then I'll discuss the methodology and the procedure. Okay, so this is my understanding of this problem thus far. Hey, Bob. Um, my research question is, how does an information technology corner improve teaching through IT in a school? And these are the, uh, the thematic elements that have been influencing my understanding of this problem thus far. Uh, one is uh, changing classrooms and changing schools as technology progresses schools need to change and they need to adapt. Uh, in addition, what I see uh, an information technology coordinator as is, I guess, a legacy, um, a part of this kind of instructional design history. Uh, I also uh, have been reading literature on information technology coordinators in uh, recent studies, international and local studies, so you get a picture of what they are in the literature. Um, I also have a Hong Kong context and understanding of uh, information technology and education studies in Hong Kong. And finally, I guess it's the most important, uh, my own experience as an IT coordinator and uh, this particular experience that kind of got my mind thinking about this problem. All right, all right first of all, uh, what's technology? Um, there are a lot of definitions uh, from the very broad. Uh, Don Ida said that uh, technology can be like totalized to incorporate all ways of people doing things. But again, that kind of definition is too broad. It's not very useful, I think, for uh, making generalizations or um, yeah, for for just uh, for this kind of study. I think that that definition is a bit too broad. In the same way, um, maybe technology can be too narrow. Technology encompassing just tools, things like a desk is a piece of technology. So, uh, thus far, what I've adopted is this idea that Franklin poses that technology is technol a tool with practice, um, a predisposition to use something in a certain way. That is technology, from my understanding. Okay? Educational technology. This is technology being used for teaching and learning. And information technology, um, it's a bit different from technology in the sense that information technology deals with perhaps the transfer, storage, and reconstruction and creation of information. So these are particular things that you do with information using technology. All right. 
so how do we talk about this? I've been reading a lot about school change, uh, how schools change with regard to uh, IT adoption and, and integration. And there are many, many models um, in the literature that uh, create categories and levels, stages uh, of IT integration in schools. And I just compared four of them. Where are they? Hello. Here. Uh, thus far. And uh, one is the concerns based adoption model. And, uh, two others have been developed by Nancy Law. Uh, three distinctive roles for ICT in the curriculum, three models of IT in schools change. And this one I just read. Uh, it's a four level framework for IT integration in schools. And what are these things? How do I view these things? Uh, and I'm trying to, again, position the IT coordinator within this understanding of changing schools because of changing technology. And first of all, I see these as organizational learning responses. So these different stages are how an organization can respond to this uh, idea of uh, technology being incorporated in school. And uh, these can, I guess, uh, show how the schools are thinking um, in very different yet specific ways about how they use technology in a school. Okay. So these can be considered like wider organizational learning responses to technology integration. Now, something about these stages is that, in my understanding, is that they're not linear. So. Um, as schools, organizations are uh, adapting to or responding to technology, they don't necessarily progress from one stage to the other, all right? Because we have to think about it. Technology keeps changing. That means a school has to keep changing. That means it has to keep continue to respond. So think about like a school in the 1970s that perhaps was on top of its game, you know, using uh, these uh, very large computers, for example. But then think about the technology these days, so using portable electronic devices, uh, using Web 2.0. Maybe their response isn't the same as it was 30 years ago. All right, so this isn't necessarily linear. And um, again, there's no moral sense either. That is, one isn't necessarily better than the other. Um, these are just different organizational learning responses. Depending on school's conditions and its goals, et cetera, they can respond in a certain way. All right. So how do I view the IT coordinator in, in view of these changing uh, schools and these changing classrooms? And one way that I view it is this model, uh, this IT coordinator that I want to study can be seen as a response uh, to, by schools at a certain stage of IT maturity. So for example, down here in some of these uh, models, and again I tried to compare them, you know, schools that are perhaps learning through IT or that are refining and integrating and renewing their use of IT, uh, employ this person. This is a response. At this stage, they realize to sustain this, for example, they're going to need this guy. All right. However, I was also thinking about uh, the IT coordinator not as a response, but as a catalyst. So, in fact, the IT coordinator is more than a response to just IT and education integration, this person is an organizational learning catalyst. So this is the guy who's going to take you from level two to level three. All right, He's actually the bridge. Uh, and that is very important because that entails this guy doing a lot more than improving teaching uh, through uh, IT. This means do improving the way the school does things, right? Because you think about it, and the way that uh, 
in order to actually improve teaching through IT, that entails a lot of organizational change. For example, um, you know, establishing relationships with colleagues, developing professional support, curriculum support, uh, providing leadership, etc. So that's another way to view the IT coordinator within these frameworks. Like he's a guy who's going to take you to the next level. So let me move on to something else that I've been reading about um, instructional design. And this is very important because uh, I, I view the IT coordinator as this piece. He is a part of this instructional design family tree. And uh, what is instructional design? Instructional design is basically um, the missing link between learning theory and learning practice. Learning is not magic. You know, you don't just do something and something happens. Uh, learning it can be an intervention where you think about goals, learning goals, and then you plan tasks, and then you assess uh, whether the goals were met based on the tasks. All right? And we can see that you know, school is like this. Uh, what we're doing right now, OBTL, is a part of instructional design. Right? Uh, that is objective-based teaching and learning here at Hong Kong U. That's also instructional design. And we have this instructional design, and then where does it stand with regard to changing technology? And I view this relationship as a dialogical process. Uh, as technology changes, uh, people need to rethink what can be done in instructional design with the technology. Right? How can we incorporate these tools uh, into teaching and learning? Um, on the other hand, we can see that the learning theory and the practice is also shaped by the technology. So for example, uh, in the 1950s and the 60s, we didn't have the technology that we have now. Uh, we had technology that could be easily controlled, that could be monitored, uh, that was relatively static compared to certain uh, options that we have these days. So maybe, naturally, that informed uh, behaviorist learning theory. The idea that you know, we can break things up into small chunks and then uh, achieve these certain behavioral learning outcomes. Sorry, uh, you just mentioned that I can ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got a bit confused. What's the research question? Oh, the research what, is, what, is your, what is your hypothesis? What are you going to do? What's your, can you define your research question specifically? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, where? Okay. Uh, Where's my research question? This is my research question. How does an information technology coordinator improve teaching through IT in a school? I was just going through my, the literature that I've been reading that's uh, informed my understanding what the IT coordinator is and what exactly I'm doing. Okay, second question. How would you define IT coordinator? Is that a teacher teaching IT or setting the hardware or setting the yeah, software? That's a good question. Yeah, what was that? Okay. Um, I'll move on then to uh, this, this understanding of the IT coordinator. All right, so where am I going? I am going, where am I going? Here. All right. So, um, what is this IT coordinator guy? All right. Uh, I, I've taken a look at these studies. I need to take a look at many more. And we see two international studies and, and just two local ones. And in these international studies, I noticed that the IT coordinator generally supported the technical aspect of teaching with IT. He did not support the pedagogical aspect of teaching through IT. Uh, and I discerned that through 
the way the IT coins were used in the research. Just give me a sec. So for example, in the Sykes 2006 study, the IT coordinators were given a technical questionnaire, all right? And they were asked about uh, maintenance of IT infrastructure. Whereas the principals were asked about the pedagogical support for IT. So there was this division here where the principals were assumed to know something about the pedagogical support, and then the IT coordinators were assumed to know something about the technical support. They were not asked about pedagogical support. In, but again, their actual role as IT coordinator was unclear. That is, what is their actual primary responsibility? Are they IT coordinators or are they actually teachers first? All right. And the Sykes M1 study shed a bit more light on that. And indeed, these IT coordinators, and this was a, a Hong Kong study, these IT corners in these schools, these, at least these were aided in DSS schools, were teachers first. And then their area of responsibility was IT coordination. All right. So these IT coordinators were, again, teachers first, IT coordinators second. And, okay. Uh, these IT coordinators in the study were asked about IT infrastructure and maintenance, again, this, this idea of uh, technical support, and they were asked uh, about pedagogical support. But it was unclear is whether they were asked about pedagogical support because they are teachers, right? because they actually are teachers first, and whether or not they would be asked these same questions had they just been IT corners and not teachers. Okay, so that was a bit unclear. And then I looked at these two uh, studies in Hong Kong international schools about IT coordinators. And this, uh, there's a study, and how would I describe this? Based on this study, um, I was quite curious. In fact, this person hopefully will become one of my cases in, in my research. Uh, there was this organizational change in international school. There was already an IT coordinator, but he was not instrumental in this organizational change uh, as regards integrating IT in the curriculum in this international school. Who was instrumental was this teacher. There was this IT teacher who was very, very instrumental in uh, transitioning, helping the school transition from a, a, a particular way of integrating IT in the curriculum to a new way of integrating IT in the curriculum. And in fact, this guy did not play an important role in this transition. It was the instrumental teacher. And in fact, what happened was this instrumental teacher, because of what he did, he actually became the IT coordinator. They created a new position for him where he went off table. All right. And then I looked at another study of a school in Hong Kong, an international school, well, a sort of international school. And in this instance, there was an IT coordinator. He was a teacher first, and then an IT coordinator second. Uh, IT coordination was his area of responsibility. In his teaching timetable, he was given two hours off to be the IT coordinator. And uh, in general, I, I viewed him as marginalized because there wasn't a lot of support for the pedagogical aspect of teaching through IT. There was a lot of support in the school for the technical aspect of teaching through IT. There was a full-time IT technician. Right? And generally, all these schools have full-time IT technicians, but they don't necessarily have full-time IT consultants. right? And um, a lot of the, the policies were voluntary as regards teaching through IT. So whatever he did was basically marginalized from the start because no one had to do it. All right, so all of his initiatives uh, never had to follow. Okay. Does that kind of answer your question a bit about like what an IT coiner is? Um, yes, I understand that the definition is still, still not very clear. Although mm. it's difficult to draw the line between IT coordinator and also IT teacher. Do you know the yeah. pedagogy issue can involve something called random learning, 
mm. mobile learning, that sort of things. And that is supposed to be what the teacher should know. Mm. And, um, and uh, as far as I understand the Hong Kong setting is the IT coordinator is something, uh, is someone who, who is going to implement the process. But um, even that, the duties are various. Yes. Some are setting program, mm. some setting software, some are doing different, different yes. types of different media. And uh, uh, what's your point? What's your point in your research? What's your point? Is that you're going to link up the pedagogy and the technology together? That's, that's what, what, what I want. What I'm asking about your research. OK, research. good. Yeah, I'm going to get there in a moment. Sorry. Mm -hmm. OK, so then let me just talk about my experience. Uh, let me. OK, I'll, I'll talk, talk about my experience first. OK, um, I was an IT coordinator, too. Uh, I guess I'm an insider uh, as regards this understanding. I worked at four, uh, several schools, and uh, my experience was very similar to what I've been reading in the literature. I was uh, a teacher first, and then my area of responsibility was coordination. Uh, there wasn't a lot of formal and systematic, systemic support for uh, my duties. Uh, I was appointed because people saw me using technology, and they're like, hey, you can be the IT coordinator. Um, it was rare for me to uh, help with pedagogy, and now let me talk about my understanding of the IT coordinator per this study, okay? So I have this mental model of this IT coordinator in my head, and then I go to this conference, this 21st century learning conference, and there I meet these people, um, and, and like I don't even know, it was, it was amazing, it was just I was so blessed. And I met these people, and they were IT pedagogical support for their school, full-time IT pedagogical support for their school. And I was like, wow, I've never encountered these people before uh, in my life, uh, in my experience. And um, I guess this is because they came from certain schools, special schools. Uh, again, these schools were subsidizing these guys to attend this very expensive conference uh, on weekdays, no less, uh, to hopefully come back and improve teaching through IT in their schools. So I was meeting these very special people uh, as regards their official role to uh, support IT, uh, support teaching through IT to improve it. They were not teachers. They actually, their primary duty was just to be, I guess, like an internal consultant, all right, to support uh, pedag uh, the pedagogy. And they came from these certain schools. And what's more was, and this was very interesting, this was the individual element. These people just seemed very special. Um, they were gregarious. They talked to other people. Um, they were networking. Uh, what I recall in my mind is that, you know, we were sitting on this bus, and we were just going from one venue to the next. And this, uh, one of the, these IT coordinators it just asked everyone in the bus about this problem that she had, about like uh, how to best uh, use e-portfolios for this particular uh, uh, task or this uh, in the teaching and learning. And all of a sudden, everyone starts chipping in their ideas. And again, these people are strangers. All right, they don't have to do this. They can just like look out the window. But then this this very significant discussion takes place about the merits of e-portfolios in this particular context, and everyone's really sharing. And I was like, wow, these people are really special. All right? And so, per my understanding of the IT coordinator in this study, these IT coordinators are full-time pedagogical support for uh, teachers, uh, for teaching and learning, for the improvement of teaching and learning in, in a school. Now, uh, something that, that uh, you, you kind of uh, touch on is, again, my nomenclature is still a work in progress. I actually don't want to call these people IT coordinators because it's misleading. It's misleading. I'm still trying to think of the best term to call what these people are. Right? Again, they come from this instructional design history, right? and even in their schools, they have various titles. Right? They, they aren't called the IT coordinator. They're just called these, these, these people. Right? And each one has a different title. Just for the sake of simplicity, I call it the IT coordinator. And again, we have different mental models of what an IT coordinator is. 
So it, again, I'm trying to figure out what do I call these people, all right? Does that answer your question a little more? Does it mean that you have to refine the wordings of your research questions? Yes. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, where was this conference in Hong Kong? Yeah, it was in several, it was held at West Island School. And then there are like several other schools that participate. You can go on school tours and meet these, uh, and tour the facilities and talk with these people, IT coordinators. Yeah. And a lot of teachers went, a lot of principals went. And again, this was a very special event because only certain schools went. And it seemed like a lot of non-mainstream schools went. And that brings me to another point about these studies. A lot of the studies in Hong Kong, the big ones, have focused on this idea of Hong Kong schools. And this is something that needs to be changed a bit. Uh, this also, I believe, assumes a national cultural identity. That is, the schools that are used in Hong Kong in these studies are supposed to be representative of Hong Kong. They have the name Hong Kong. But when you look at the, the schools that are used in these samples, uh, for example, in the site studies, they tend to be aided and DSS, no, aid, mostly aided schools. And they're representative of all that is going on in Hong Kong. So, the problem is, is that there are these schools that have a lot of flexibility as uh, regards uh, financing, curriculum, uh, student and uh, uh, teacher intakes. And the, the thing in Hong Kong is that these schools are growing. These schools are growing now. These more flexible schools, this model is growing. The aided school is dying. And so we see in Hong Kong this, this uh, shift from uh, these mainstream schools, the sector is shrinking, it's contracting, and the non-mainstream sector is uh, expanding. And there's not a lot of research yet into the IT integration in these schools, or there should be more. And what makes these schools very special too, and worth studying, is they face a very unusual external environment. So Hong Kong itself is a very unusual environment. Uh, we think about these schools and again, because maybe they're English speaking schools because a lot of non-Cantonese people go to these schools or rich Chinese people go to these schools, perhaps they're a little disconnected from other schools, like mainstream schools or people who speak Cantonese or their neighbors, they face uh, a unique set of neighbors, a unique set of constraints. Again, uh, there's a lot of individualism, not a lot of union presence. Uh, and the government is generally hands off these schools. Uh, they have a lot of flexibility. So uh, this, is, this factors into my, my understanding as well, just uh, bolstering the research in this area. Uh, studying uh, these special people in these special schools. And I haven't found these special people in the mainstream schools yet, but I'm gonna to continue to read it about uh, literature. Okay. Are these secondary schools that you're talking about specifically, or? Um, there, are uh, there are some, uh, I'll get to that in a moment. There are secondary schools, and then there are like the through train schools, and then primary schools as well. to uh, that in two minutes. So uh, these are my research objectives. And again, uh, I have this, beware of this IT coordinator name. I'm, I'm studying these people, okay? And I want to study their capabilities, experience, and characteristics. I also want to study their schools because these guys exist in a certain environment. They don't exist in other environments. They exist and thrive in these certain environments. And I want to explore the dynamic between these individuals and who they are and these schools and what they are and how through this interaction we get these guys doing work in this way. And I would also like to identify and deliver some success criteria. Right? What makes these guys successful based on what they are, who they are, and where they are. 
Okay, I'm going to use a multiple case study research strategy. And um, these are instrumental in the sense that hopefully from comparing these cases of these special people in these special schools, we can develop some generalisms. I mean, you can't make generalizations, but we can develop something useful about these people. And that might entail the success criteria. And uh, again, uh, this multiple case study research strategy is useful for uh, fleshing out a very context, uh, deeply contextual phenomenon. And this is what I believe this IT coordinator is. Uh, he's deeply contextualized as regards his school and, and who that person is. Uh, the unit of analysis is this person, this IT coordinator. And the IT coordinator, well, how am I going to collect data? Uh, plan thus far to uh, observe, to interview, to interview other people, and to watch uh, lessons. And I'm taking a grounded approach. That is, I'm not t using grounded theory, which is, uh, was a Corbin, Strauss, Glazer, those guys. I'm uh, borrowing from this theory uh, to hopefully develop, um, again, these generalisms. Oh, like nuts. We're done. Yes, maybe. We're done. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, let, let, let me just answer uh, your, your question about the schools. Okay, the sample and selection criteria. Um, I'm trying to have balance and variety in these cases. And uh, there are some people who have been, I've select, I've, I think I've found four thus far. And uh, they vary in terms of years of experience at the school. They also vary in terms of whether they're insiders or outsiders prior to becoming these assuming these positions in the school. Some people are actually new to the school. Some people have transitioned from being a teacher to, um, to this role. All right? Others have just come to the school and assumed this role. Uh, in terms of scope of coordinated jurisdiction, some people are in charge of the entire school, primary and secondary section. Another person is in charge of just uh, a primary section. Another guy, hopefully, is in charge of several schools. All right? so, uh, what I'm trying to do is achieve this balance and variety of these people's, these people's uh, scope of jurisdiction. Uh, typological distribution of schools, um, what do I have? I, I have one private independent school, two international schools, no, uh, and an international school body. So there are different types of schools as well. All right? And geographical distribution of schools, they're all nearby. Access, again, this is all contingent upon me being able to access these people. The IT coordinators first and then getting permission to do the data collection. Okay, questions? Is it important to have, um, I guess you have to acknowledge geographical distribution because you know, cause you're probably selecting them because it's easy. Or, I mean, you're actually, you're saying that up front. I like your typological distribution. So you're selecting across different things. So you're getting a, a broad range. Yes. Things to look at. If and, you went outside your geographical distribution, would it help or not? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I need to think about that. Uh, again, uh, with this, we can actually make a generalization about these schools in this area, uh, potentially. Um, and with this, again, it's very convenient because they're all nearby. I like it, though, because with my study, I'm just, I, I am tempted to select schools that are closer to me that require less of a commute mm. um, that are also um, logical. But, mm. uh, so you have to mention that. Or do, <laughs> I guess yes. it's nice to mention that. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess uh, this, could be, this study could be extended to all of Hong Kong because, I mean, all of Hong Kong is accessible, I think. No, but your criteria is if you want interesting cases that are, what do you call them, success criteria or something? Yeah. I think that's really, you know, you're not looking at those who are not the special 
the geniuses at work. Yes. You're, you're looking at the geniuses at work. Yes, these are the special ones. Yeah, I like it. So, I mean, this is very useful, I think, to inform both individual and organizational practice, the, just the, the, the cases of these special ones. But you need to know what exists outside of those special cases in order to uh, show their specialness. Mm, yes. And, and so I need to review a lot more literature about just this position or, or, or uh, the mental model of this position, this IT coordinator position in other schools uh, in Hong Kong and internationally. And I've only looked at those things thus far, but we have this idea that in the literature they, they look a lot different than what these things are right now. And you want to be current, so you may want to look at what's actually going to see for yourself. Yeah. All, a lot of different schools, like a phase one, this is what's happening in Hong Kong. Mm. And here's a small group that are special. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Why do you No, but then narrow it back down. It's just a quick, quick little look into it, and then you narrow it back down. Mm. Then you're able to have it grounded in this in something. It's not just a floating idea. Thank you. I will I will include them. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm sorry guys, I kept you.